Woo! Third tuck. Welcome to this episode of Small Bike Stuff. This one here is unique because it's got a couple of modifications and it's also been repowered with a Chinese Lifan 125cc engine, which is a common topic of conversation with Honda CT110 and CT90 owners. So let's get into it and have a talk about this bike. So first things first, it's got a Lifan 125cc engine and this thing here is basically out of the box into the bike and just goes as it is. It's got a carburetor sitting there that was once again straight out of the box and works. It's made to work with the original airbox which goes up here and into the rear rack and has an intake under there. Um, so you can still do the, the, the deep uh, river crossings as long as your carburetor doesn't mind too much. You can kind of get up to here. Some people think you can get up to here in the stock bikes and have and do. But um, there is a crankcase beather at the top of these engines as well, which probably does let a bit of water in, so you definitely want to do an oil change after any significant um, water crossings. Four speed, four speed, semi-auto, and those are all up as well. So as you can see, there's no clutch up here at all. If we head round to the other side, we just have a Lifan 125. So this 125cc engine is actually a kind of a recreation of a Honda engine anyway, but it wasn't the engine that came from the CT110. This is a Lifan 125, as I've mentioned already. These came from a Honda 100cc engine. They were commonly found in the Dream or the EX100, and uh, they were in Malaysia and Thailand, and then they got taken by Chinese companies and reproduced, turned into 100cc engines, 110s, 125s, and you can even get 140-shaped versions of this that bolt in. So that's a really, really cool thing about these CT110s is there's a lot of compatibility between different models. So here you've got your pipe, which is just a standard kind of AliExpress Chinese option that bolts on and works. And it's a high pipe and um, yeah, it does the job. So not much to complain about there. In fact, nothing to complain about. All right, wheels. So this is a 17 inch wheel front and rear. Honda was famous for throwing these 17 inch wheels, skinny wheels on bikes um, from the get go basically in the 1950s, 58 I think it was, the Super Cup C100 came out with 17 inch wheels and most of their small bikes from then have followed on. This thing here is running a 2.75 by 17 Ching Shin tire. Drum brakes on the front and while we're at the front, these forks here are actually from a CT125. I'll throw a picture of the one I mean up now, not the modern CT125 but the older farm bike. On the rear, once again, we've got a 17, but this thing here is a Shinko SR241. I love this tire tread pattern. It really does the job. Um, very soft, but they are really aggressive and grippy when you've got them. Um, but once they wear down, you obviously, they're just a good for a skid and that's about it. 275 by 17. SR241 Shinko. There's also a drum brake on the rear here as well, which I forgot to mention. So yeah, pretty cool. 17 inch, 125. What else do you want in life? Not much. CT110 for the win. Controls, so the speedometer here, I love these things. Um, it's an integrated speedometer headlight bucket. So you've got the four speed indication or the gear shift indication as to where you should use each gear. Um, obviously that's been thrown out the window, <laughs> the 125 installed, but the speedometer has a neutral light, high beam light, and also has a turn signal light and goes up to 100 kilometers an hour. On the left turn signal, you've got left and right, which obviously doesn't auto cancel. You've got high and low for the lights. And then you've got your horn there as well. On the right switch block, we have our kill switch, so our run switch, so off, run, off, and then you've also got your light control here so you can turn them off or on independently of everything else, so yeah, pretty cool machine. We've also got the front brake there, you've got your rear brake down there as per normal, and then once we head down here to our shifter, it's just a standard shifter bolted straight into the side of the engine. So four up, 125cc, not a dramatic amount of controls at play here. Headlight, standard, turn signal, standard, same with the tail light, standard Honda tail light for the CT110s here in New Zealand with turn signals as well. Now quirks or custom modifications and different things about this. So yeah, I mean at first sight there's a few different changes here. Number one, we've got a quad lock <laughs> mounted here which is awesome. I didn't actually realise that when I jumped on before and I do have a quad lock case on my phone. Which I'm filming with now to be honest with you because it just works really well and gets 4K footage. So that's a secret life hack out there for those of you wanting to make videos, don't need a DSLR. Um, forks came from a CT125. Now they came from the egg model of the CT125, not the modern one. This is the one that was available in the 80s and the 90s. And um, yeah, it was a farm bike essentially, as were these. In Australia, they're known as a posty bike because they were mostly used for postal service with the big rear rack there. They're made for some good bag carrying to therefore take a lot of letters and postage items to different places. So the whole fleet of these throughout New Zealand and Australia, mainly Australia, but definitely New Zealand as well, delivering mail. 
This thing here is the AG version, so this would have had a high-low transmission, which a lot of guys will argue is a better engine than this, and it can be if it's working, but if it's blown up, you know, why not replace it with something easy and cost-effective? I think these are like less than $400 out of the box, and just rebuilding, you know, part for part, a original Honda engine, you'd be into, you know, 11, 12, 13, 14, 50, 100 New Zealand dollars, running an 18-tooth front sprocket, and I think standard on the rear, and it just gives it a really nice bit of pep. I can pop the front wheel nice and easily if I want to. Um, on the seat, we've got what well, happens to us people when we get old, um, a sore bum rectifier. So <laughs> this here is just a uh, little Velcro kind of system that um, has some gel pads on the top and really helps when you're sitting as well. Rear box, this is the New Zealand classic ABC crate. These usually carry 12 big bottles of beer. I'll throw a photo up now. And this thing here has been customized by the owner, Chris, at Cogs Engineering. And um, he's even used a CT90 conrod there that's bent um, for the closing mechanism. And yeah, you've got a whole bunch of storage room in there. So it's quite cool. The mesh has been added to stop things falling out because obviously they have big gaps otherwise. You've got some soft foam here as well that makes for a nice backrest. So there's a lot that has been thought of with this bike that I really enjoy. Another thing that's been changed are the shocks. So these things here are 10 mil longer than stock. And the reason you got 10 mil longer than stock is the CT125 front forks are taller. So this bike sits off the ground a bit further than normal. You've got one of these five liter, I believe, three liter um, jerry cans that's fit on the side here, which is uh, probably a bit safer to carry than carrying one of the old original cans that they came with from the factory because those things are worth almost as much as one of those engines is, about three, 400 New Zealand dollars now. So yeah, this is just another way to have an auxiliary fuel supply. The original tanks did have a proper mounting bracket system, but this has been made to work. Side stands. So you see how you've got a side stand here on the left side? You've also got a side stand on the right hand side. And that's kind of how you know it was used for farm use or postal service here in New Zealand, because they have the two side stands there. Um, just so when you get off the bike, if you're a farm fence or you're out delivering mail, the litter box, you just chuck it down on this side if you want to. and. It's 100% fine as well. So yeah, pretty cool. Double side stands, back onto this one now. And I did have a rock under it because it was leaning over quite a way, as you can see. But yeah, overall, this thing here is a wicked machine. It sounds better than they do coming out of the factory. It goes better than they do out of the factory, but how fast does it go? Let's try go and do a top speed test after we start this thing. So yeah, a much nicer sound than stock. So yeah, as you can see, this thing here is just kind of your quintessential pest machine, as we like to say in New Zealand. Pesting is a form of riding where you go out with no real aim, just go out and have fun. And it's usually to do it with small bikes, and that's what this thing is good at, pesting. The 110 engines that are high-low are great. You can go up, you know, at basically this wall you could ride up. But this 125 makes up for the low gearing about 80% of the way. Obviously the low gearing on the original CT110 can go up much steeper hills than this thing here can, but this thing here has a lot more pep in general use, and you're not sitting there in low gear unless you've got a really extraordinary purpose all the time. So yeah, it does the job. Let's um, take it for a ride, eh? Time to go ride this thing. I love CTs, and yeah, the, for the purists out there, like I get it, I do love them in stock form too. Ultimately, who wouldn't want a perfect condition CT with a high-low gearbox in their stable? However, this is not a bad alternative. Let's take it for a home. Find some road we can do a <laughs> speed test on. It does, does lift the front wheel up if you want. <laughs> I can't wheelie for... Save my life. It's very bouncy, like, you know, if you give it a bit of a squiggle, like this, you can definitely feel the soft walls. But you do get used to it, you kind of need to have a motocross mentality, just, it doesn't matter if it slips out a little bit, you'll be right. Even the neutral light works. And it will idle. Oh, this thing's just great. How can you complain about a Chinese engine when, um, you know, it works just the same, if not better, than the original. Them fighting words, I know, but seriously, it does. Let's go. 
see if we can get a top speed run. Our traffic's a little bit built up, we might not get... I've only got a small bit of space here where I can do a top speed run. But I will turn around so we might get a chance on the way back. Either way, I'll cut to where I get my top speed run. Don't let this top speed run make you think that this is as fast as a Life M125 can go. It's not, probably not the case. It probably can go faster. Third. Tuck. Third's got a lot of legs. Fourth. I can feel we're increasing like incrementally, like 1k an hour every five or six seconds maybe. I think this is about it though. So yeah. It'll be interesting to find out what speed this actually is. I liked my wheelies. <laughs> Alright, let's pull over up here and check that speed. Oh my god, 99.2. Really? It didn't feel that fast, but I'll take it. 99.2 kilometers, there you go. 100 kilometers an hour, out of a life end. There goes my thumbnail and title. Something about 60 mph, 100 kph, or the CT110. That'll get the people clicking. Let me know if it made you click. <laughs> we'll see you next time on Small Bike Stuff. 100 kilometers an hour from a life on 125, 110. Trail 110 for all you Americans out there. But um, let's screenshot that for good memories. And um, yeah, if you want to learn about how this model came into existence, I made a video about it uh, a while ago. It's all about the guy that physically created the first Honda Trail. If you don't know, this wasn't originally a Honda model. The Honda Super Cub was modified by a dealer called Herb Yule in Idaho, in America, in 1959. And uh, Honda turned it into an official model. I have an interview with the founder, the creator of this machine, Bill uh, Herb Yule. I said Bill, that's his son's name. On this channel, and it's incredibly interesting to go and learn about hear it from the horse's mouth, the guy's in his 90s and tells you all about how he created the Honda trail bike. Anyway, thank you for watching this showcase of a life and swapped Honda. I'm going to go ride it. There's enough of this. Enough of this talking. <laughs>